I decided to go to dinner um, with uh, two of my cousins. And while we were, you know, going to dinner, uh, I actually remembered that it was my little cousin's birthday that day. Uh, and he lives in Sacramento and stayed outside and I was on the phone with him just wishing him a happy birthday. And I was walking around outside the Habit Burger uh, in, in Bakersfield uh, off of California Avenue. I hear a sort of angry buzzing, this, this noise in the background, and I couldn't quite place what it was. And then I heard it again. And, and when the words uh, became clear to me, it, it, it shocked me. Because what I heard was, you're gonna blow up this country. Ultimately, you know, he came forward and I, I asked him what was going on. We uh, exchanged a few words and, and he threw a drink in my face and, and walked away. My involvement on this case came in when I saw on the news that the, when the, the family was interviewed and they were very frustrated because uh, it had just recently happened, the crime had happened, but the person hadn't been arrested yet, nothing had been filed. Uh, the problem was is that the police needed to conduct their investigation, then they turn over the reports to us, and that hadn't happened yet. And, and the police were doing their job, it's just that they had to get the videotape, collect all the evidence, all the statements, do their reports, and then submit it to us for review to determine whether or not we have a crime. You know, our uh, law enforcement officers and our legal system deals with a lot. They, they face many challenges, uh, they have many burdens. And it's very, very difficult, I think, to be able to prioritize, just given the sheer volume of, of cases that they face, uh, what comes first. I didn't see anything that really struck me as they were intentionally dragging their feet in any way. Um, I, I think that there is probably uh, some, uh, some prioritizing of their resources, that they didn't dump a lot of resources into this because this was a misdemeanor. It took repeated calling from me. Even when the officer came and, and took a statement at home, I, I actually provided him with the license plate number of the vehicle of the, the attacker. And the response I got back was really, this is not, you know, it's not like CSI. These things can't really happen overnight. You know, a detective will be in contact with you. You know, I had to reach out to a local uh, legal official that I knew. I think that there were some calls made because that same officer came back about an hour later and was suddenly able to provide a lot more information. And he also brought a, a pamphlet with him saying that this is actually a hate crime and it has to be uh, dealt with differently. During that process, I was in touch with a few local community groups that provided a lot of support. We were able to organize a interfaith night against hate at a local Sikh Gurdwara. And that brought, you know, over 200 people from various communities together to talk about the issues of hate in our community. We can't place the burden of our community policing solely on law enforcement or our legal officials. We as a community have a responsibility to take action in the community that we live in, to stand up, voice our opinion, and make sure that uh, issues that affect us are, are taken seriously.